What's up everybody, it's GomletX, and welcome back to some more Guilds of Ravnica Drafts. Today we have a ridiculous Mythic Rare. I don't love the distribution of this pack in terms of what we're passing. We're passing two pretty good Boros Uncommons, so we're likely to be telling the person to our left to also get in Boros here, but there's no way we're taking anything over Aurelia, who is a absolutely busted Mythic. Four mana for a 2-5 Flyer with Mentor, and at the beginning of combat on your turn, choose up to one creature you control until end of turn it gets plus two, plus zero, no matter what, and it gets Trample if it's red and Vigilance if it's white. So Aurelia is absolutely busted by herself. She is a four mana, four, five flyer on attacks, four, five Vigilant Trample flyer, that is, and with other creatures you can buff up whatever you need, usually your mentors, to make sure that you keep putting plus one, plus one counters onto other creatures on the field. So Aurelia, a pretty busted card, and Boros is one of the better guilds in the set, so we're happy to be in that guild if we can be. So now we have Sky Knight Legionnaire. This is one of the better Boros commons. Healer's Hawk is pretty nice with enough mentor creatures to work with it. Command the Storm is... Moderately expensive removal for a Boros deck. Boros tends to be really, really aggressive, but it's still good removal nonetheless. And then we have like a larger mentor creature with Barging Sergeant, a larger flyer with Hellkite Whelp, and Hazda Marshal, which works if you're really curving out in the early game. I think it's just going to be Sky Knight Legionnaire. I think this is the best card just in general for most situations out of all of these for a Boros deck. So we're going to roll with the Sky Knight Legionnaire out of that pack. It also works the best with Aurelia because it's red and white. It would get both the Trample and the Vigilance. So now we have what in this pack? Not a lot, honestly. The best card in the pack is Deadly Visit in black, but we're pretty far from that. We don't really want to be taking any black cards here. We could feel free to be taking green cards or blue cards. In general, when you're taking off-color cards from the guild that you start with, like, you want to try to be taking cards that are in a guild that's at least allied to one of your colors. So Selesnya is allied to our white, it's green-white, and then Izzet is allied to our red, it's red-blue. Whereas if we're taking a black card, we would be in black-green or black-blue, so we'd have to definitely abandon all of these, we couldn't even splash them in. So Deadly Visit's the best card by far. Uh, everything else in here is pretty mediocre. We have basically Barging Sergeant, Hunted Witness, or Skyline Scout. I guess I'll roll with the Skyline Scout first. Barging Sergeant is like a good top-end mentor card, but I usually don't want more than like one in my deck. I'm not a massive fan of that card. Now we have a couple Demir cards. Demir is looking open with Demir Informant and Whisper Agent. These are both pretty... Pretty solid Demir cards. Undercity Uprising isn't that great, so it's not a huge sign that Golgari's open. There's a Golgari Guildgate as well, though. A few white cards to choose from. We have Ledev Guardian, a Pump Spell with Take Heart. Take, uh, Take Heart's pretty playable in Boros. Um, pump Spells in general are pretty playable in Boros because they work really well with your Mentor creatures. If you have a two-power Mentor creature and another two-power creature on the board, you're never going to get value out of the Mentor trigger unless you have a random Pump Spell to buff your Mentor's power for like a single turn. Then you're permanently buffing your other um, your other creature's power. But here I think it's going to be Demotion. Demotion is pseudo-removal. It's removal in the sense that it stops a creature from blocking and using its activated abilities, but it doesn't stop that creature from attacking. So it's only really a moval... A moval? <laughs> it's only really removal if you're on the offensive. In a Boros deck, we want to be on the offensive as much as possible, so that is where Demotion is at its best. Uh, but obviously, if we're in a defensive situation and they have a big scary attack we need to deal with, Demotion is not going to help us that much. Out of this pack, I'm going to take a Rock Charger. It combos really well with a lot of the Mentor creatures. Most of the Mentor creatures are grounded creatures, and uh, most of them have more than one power. Uh, I think the only one with one power is like the, the Goblin that you can pump up with its ability. So obviously with any Mentor creatures, you can attack with your Rock Charger and that Mentor creature. All of a sudden you're mentoring up the Rock Charger to make it a 2-4 flyer, which just really quickly gets to a size that is very hard to kill. Out of this pack, we have a Healer's Hawk. As I said before, it's a good creature to mentor onto, turning it into a 2-2 Flying Lifelink, then a 3-3 Flying Lifelink. All that stuff is great. Righteous Blow is cheap removal. 
Obviously, it only shoots in attacking or blocking creatures, so if anything's sitting there using annoying abilities like a guild mage, it won't help with that. But I think it is a good card. Healer's Hawker Righteous Blow is definitely the pick here. We're not going to take the random 3-2 or the little pump spell. There is also Garrison Sergeant, but I'm not a huge fan of that. I'm going to pick up the Healer's Hawk here. Now we have a two mana creature to fill out that part of the curve, 10th District Guardian or Skyline Scout. Skyline Scout can get flying when it attacks, but it only has one toughness. And uh, there are a lot of tokens in the format because of Selesnya. There's also a lot of one power creatures, just like Passwall Adept is a 1-3, that are really good at uh, shutting off your one toughness creatures and basically forcing you to use that flying ability. So I kind of want the higher toughness creature here for now. Maniacal Rage is definitely playable in Boros, though, again, just because of how well it combos with Mentor creatures. I'm going to take the 10th District Guard first, though. I expect stuff like Maniacal Rage to wheel pretty late. And here we are with two more of the two drops. Both of these are pretty interchangeable. Skyline Scout is obviously going to be better against stuff like Olgari, that tends to have a lot of creatures on the ground that would trade well with any of our creatures, uh, but it's weaker against, like, Selesnya in the 10th District Guard. So it's, it's kind of a coin flip on which of those is really better more of the time. Thousand Year Storm is unfortunately not really playable Unlimited, but it is a fun card to try to build around for formats like Historic Brawl. I'll just take a Skyline Scout out of there. And this is our first pack. So somebody took the Boros Challenger out of here, but Swath Cutter Giant is still in here. Nice little top end for a Boros deck. Really good if you're playing against Selesnya. It clears out all their stupid little 1-1 one -one tokens to help you chip away for your final few damage. So Swath Cutter Giant, definitely going to be the pick there. And now we get a nice late Barging Sergeant. Another reason that I wasn't taking these super early, they do tend to go pretty late in the packs. I can take a Loxodon Restorer and run it in this deck, or I can take a Selesnya Guildgate in case I'm wanting to try to splash in green. Maybe I open up Tristani or some other busted Selesnya rare. Yeah, I like just picking up the guild gate here. There's that Undercity Uprising still in here. All these cards are pretty weak. I guess I'll throw the Uprising in the sideboard. Rubble Belt Boar, pretty nice in a Boros deck as well, giving you that little plus two power boost to help with your mentor creatures as well. Another Undercity Uprising. I'd rather take the Is It Guildgate, to be honest, because uh, we could splash in blue, because obviously Is It, as I said before, is allied to the red that we have. And we get a Demir Mythic Rare, which we're just definitely not going to splash in. Lazov is pretty fun, pretty cool. Surveils one, and then you can copy creatures in your graveyard for X mana. Just permanently becomes a copy of one of those creatures, so... Really cool, really fun ability there, but uh, not something we can play in a red-white deck. We have a Boros Guildgate here that we'd love to wheel, but other than that, Sure Strike is quite powerful with your mentor creatures. One of the best combat tricks, giving you... Or sure Strike. Did I say Sure Strike or did I say First Strike? I don't know. Anyways, this spell gives you First Strike, so you win the combat basically no matter what, and you're getting that extra power to make sure you're mentoring on of stuff. So Sure Strike's pretty great. We'd love to wheel it. But it's between Blade Instructor or Goblin Crater Maker for now. We don't have a lot of mentor creatures right now. We basically just have uh, Aurelius. We definitely want to pick up some mentor, but I really like the versatility of Crater Maker coming out as a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two on the aggressive. And then whenever we need to use it as a removal spell to do 2 damage to something, uh, we can. Oh... So we have Deafening Clarion, which doesn't work the greatest in a Boros deck ironically, because you're dealing three damage to each creature, so you are killing all of your stuff, but um, in limited, it is nice to have a board wipe, even if in even if you're in kind of an aggressive deck, because you can save it and just use it when you're, when you're in a worse situation than your opponent. However, there's also Conclave Tribunal, which is going to be good at any point in the game. We're going to get rid of whatever their most terrifying threat is. This is a little weird, but I think I'm going to take Conclave Tribunal over the rare Deafening Clarion. Because I just feel like Deafening Clarion kills every creature in our deck except the Rally and Swathcutter Giant. And there are some problems our opponents could have that this would definitely not kill, that Conclave Tribunal would kill. And we're wanting to be in the aggressive the vast majority of the time. And in that situation, Deafening Clarion just does not help. So, don't think we're taking the Clarion there. We pick up the Conclave Tribunal. 
And now I'll just take a Righteous Blow. Could also take Vernati's Shield Mate for one and a white. Being a 2-2 two, two Vigilance is not bad at all, especially if we get three 1 Mentors like Blade Instructor. Or three Power Mentors in general, like Wojek Bodyguard is something we're really on the lookout for at this point. I'm just going to take the Righteous Blow for now. We see Candlelight Vigil to suit up our mentor creatures, Ornery Goblin. Whenever it blocks or becomes blocked, it's basically a 3-1 with that one damage ability. Not bad at all. Electrostatic Field, but we're not going to have a lot of instants and sorceries, and it's also just like a defender. Definitely not for a Boros deck. I guess I'm taking the Ornery Goblin here. Another Barging Sergeant. Maximize Velocity, Locks and Destroyer, Shield Mate, Torch Courier. I think it's like Barging Sergeant or Shield Mate are probably the best out of this pack. I'll pick up another Barging Sergeant. Now we have Hammer Dropper or another Rock Charger. I don't love missing out on the next Mentor creature because we are really looking for those, but Rock Charger is just so good I think I have to take that over, over the Hammer Dropper. Now, a fresh-faced recruit is a card I like a lot. Two mana for a 2-1. It has first strike during your turn. Which is when it's most important to have first strike, at least in a Boros deck. Now we have another Rubble Belt Boar or a Sure Strike. I'm going to take the Sure Strike. And here's our first pack. We're going to take the Blade Instructor out of this one. That is exactly what we're looking for with two Rock Chargers now. We're really looking for the... The middle of the road mentor creatures to attack with alongside the rock charger. Exile an artifact and an enchantment. Yeah, that seems pretty pointless. Pretty sure. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm pretty sure I already have all of these. I um, guess I could use like a glaive of the guild pact. That's pretty unlikely, unless I randomly pick up a million Boros guild gates. I don't think that'll happen. We'll throw a Boros locket in the sideboard. I guess I'll throw a glaive in the sideboard over the Gravitic Punch. Gravitic Punch is playable sometimes. Not really something I super want to play in here. It's definitely more fun in like an Izzet deck with stuff like Wee Dragonauts and um, the uh, the three mana four three Cyclops thing. I suppose I don't have a lot of one drops if I end up getting two mana mentor creatures. Nah, I'm still just gonna roll with the Vernati Shield Mate. All right, let's see what we open out of our final pack. We did open a rare, but it's not a good rare. It is a 2-mana two 2-2 two -two that you can sacrifice to destroy a legendary permanence if it's an artifact, creature, or enchantment. So basically anything but a planeswalker, unfortunately. I think we're just taking Inescapable Blaze, 6-mana, instant speed, uncounterable 6 damage to any target, so we can even throw this at our opponent's face to end the game, or just use it to kill any... Scary creature, like if they have a Murmuring Mystic, we would love to shoot that. So, it's going to be an inescapable blaze here. We'd like to wheel, I guess Bounty Agent is fine. It's a slightly better Vernati Shield Mate in this deck, uh, or a Direct Current would be good. So we'll take inescapable blaze first. Oh, Niv-Mizzet. That is way too hard to splash, unfortunately, with three blue mana symbols in the cost. That's just not going to happen. So we just have a Sure Strike or a Boros Guild Gate. I suppose I'll just take a Boros Guild Gate here. Sure Strike might even still wheel at this point. This is only pick two. The Guildgate probably won't with how things have been going so far. So I'm going to pick up that, that Boros Guildgate, get a little bit of mana fixing in this deck. And here's another three power mentor creature, what we're really looking for in this deck. I am happy to scoop that up. It fills out our curve and it works alongside our Rock Charger super well. There's another Sure Strike here that I'd love to have, but I'm kind of considering the third Blade Instructor with how many two-drop creatures we have. Two-drop into three-mana Blade Instructor seems pretty great. The other option is a Parhelion Patrol, which is nice as well. Two, three, Flying Vigilance Mentor. So it chips away at our opponent by itself while staying up as a blocker. But it doesn't mentor super well, because it only has two power. You really need like a combat trick or an aura for that to mentor well. I think I'm going to roll with the Blade Instructor still. Now what do we have? We do have another Rubble Belt Boar for the four mana spot. 
I like that. I think I'd go with that over something like Candlelight Vigil. It's just not something I run a whole lot. Now I can take another Healer's Hawk, which I'm fine with. Lots of green stuff in here. Circuitous Root for Ramp, Siege Worm is great, and Arboretum Elemental is okay. The problem with the Arboretum Elemental is it's so much mana for, sure, a really massive creature that can't be removed super well because of the Hexproof, but it doesn't have any form of trample. If your opponent literally just plays a Hired Poisoner, like if your opponent's in Bulgari, your Arboretum Elemental sucks because they're just going to play a Hired Poisoner or a Pitiless Gorgon, either of those, 1-1 one, one Death Touch or 2-2 two, two Death Touch, and you're just very sad. Um, and if your opponent's playing Selesnya, Arboretum Elemental's not great either because then they just have plenty of tokens to block your non-trampling creature. Siege Worm, on the other hand, that 5-5 five, five Trample and it's cheaper is, uh, is really impressive. I think I'm rolling with Hammer Dropper now that I have three Blade Instructors. Uh, but we're definitely getting paid off this pack. Getting a lot of options. And I will go with Bounty Agent here. Maybe maybe Maniacal Rage for, for the Mentor creatures. Kind of want to take Bounty Agent just for the, uh, the gems as well. Don't think I'll be running Torch Courier, but it's an option. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like all those Sure Strikes got scooped up here. It's not great. I would have loved to see more of those. We do see more Candlelight Vigils, if that's something I'm interested in. Not a card I run often, but it is something that has been run against me to pretty good effect. It's definitely an option in Boros decks. So we have 32 cards here. We get to make a lot of cuts to this deck. And just get our curve working real well. What I can't wait for is my ability to turn off the Healer's Hawk's Parallax style. Get that get that woobly out of here. Woobly warbly. Alright, Gravitic Punch. If we wanted to be playing around with that, I don't think we do. Same with Sworn Companions. Let us sort by creatures and make some cuts here. I cannot spell. Sort by Karchers. Oops. Oops. What am I doing? There we go. Oh, now I gotta do it again. Alright. I think we're gonna cut literally just exclusively creatures here. Demotion, Righteous Blow, Sure Strike, Conclave Tribunal, and Inescapable Blaze all seem like pretty important, pretty powerful non-creature spells. So I think we'll leave all five of those in and just cut the creatures down to 17. So we have to make eight cuts. We didn't get any two mana mentor creatures, which makes the healer's hawks significantly weaker. Didn't get any Boros challengers or any Vernati. Well, not Vernati shield mates. Um, what is the, there's a two mana, two mana two, two first strike with mentor. That's really good that we would have loved to see. Either way, I do think the, the Healer's Hawks are kind of weak in here because we don't get to start mentoring till turn three. If I cut the Hawks out, then we're kind of a slower Boros deck. And what am I cutting out at, uh, at two mana? Probably Locksmith. Locksmith's good against Is it because they're likely to have a lot of those 4-3 Cyclopses with Defender. Cut out the shield mate. Four more cuts here. I like how our curve is just straight up an on ramp here. Just whoop. <laughs> Four more cuts right now. Let's. I want to visualize the curve this way. Yeah, I do kind of have a lot of threes. I've got nine twos, seven threes. I don't really want to cut any Mentor out of this deck as much as I'd love to cut a three drop. Rock Charger is really powerful as is Sky Knight Legionnaire and I don't want to cut any of my Mentor creatures out like Blade Instructor. I could lower the curve by just like cutting one boar, one sergeant. That I need to cut two more cards still. 
one scout, one tenth district guard, and then we'll see which which one of these ends up being more powerful. And uh, and in between games, we can swap to whichever one we want. Do double skyline scout or double tenth district guard. This is of course best of one. So when I say in between games, I mean in between rounds against different people. Yeah, I kind of like that. Leave us open to swapping out whatever. I guess with like Crater Maker, Ornery Goblin, we've got plenty of just random like two twos for two. So Skyline Scout does the the least redundant ability. So we should probably move to just Skyline Scouts instead. And this is uh this is our Boros deck. Not a huge fan, but it looks pretty good. We've got bombs like Aurelia. That's pretty much it. <laughs> We've got removal, Conclave Tribunal, Righteous Blow, Demotion. Not a ton of removal here. I think the biggest thing that we're missing out on for being a really aggressive Boros deck are the two mana, two power mentor creatures. We would love to have those to be able to run both the Healer's Hawks in here. The curves where you go Healer's Hawk into two mana, two, two mentor are just absurd. And we don't have any of that. Uh, synergy going on here. Let's check how our colors are. Make sure that the auto uh, the auto builder did not screw us over. We've got 17 white symbols and 12 red. I think this is more of a 9-7 here. 9 plains, 7 mountains. Yeah, I don't need double red until turn 6. So, nine planes, seven mountains, and a Boros Guild Gate seems good to me. Let's get into the games, see how well the pretty traditional Aurelia Boros deck runs here. So... In terms of what I'd like to run up against, uh, maybe one of the weird five color nonsense decks. Those would be like the slowest decks in the format. I think we got a pretty good matchup against like Golgari probably. Selesnia could be a little iffy with the amount of tokens they make. And then Is It and Demir, I think those would be pretty standard matchups. Just trying to outrace their controlling nonsense. Q is unfortunately taking a little while today. Ooh, it's gonna take over a minute here. That would be very unfortunate. Descriptions, or there'll be uh, timestamps in the description below to skip to any game that you wanna skip to so you can skip through Whenever this happens, they should also put chapters on the video based on that to, to show you where the separate games are. So you can just click on that part of the video timeline to get to the next game. And that is something you should probably do because I've been sitting in this queue for over a minute. Oh, there we go. Okay, I was, I was going to cancel out of that because I thought it might have just messed up. But here we are in a game. And it's a draw. So yeah, Arena Arena had had a little bit of issues here. See so yeah, a link in description to skip to the next game. Please uh <laughs> please do so. Come on, server. I wanna play magic. I wanna play my Boros deck. There we go, that cue was three seconds, much different than the last one. All right, this seems pretty fine. Definitely not worth a mulligan. Bounty agent turn two, get a nice vigilant creature out there. Barrier of bones, I guess I'm playing ornery goblin first because that can attack into the barrier. If they block with it, the barrier will die. Rock charger turn three is gonna help a lot for poking damage through, even with my other creatures. Looks like we are against a Demir deck. They did pick up that Lazav in the draft. Maybe this is somebody in our uh, in our draft pod. Let's 
surveilling one with Lazav, choosing whether they want to put it on top or in the graveyard. All right. Oh, we've got Aurelia turn four. If I draw a land, that's pretty nice. Bounty Agent can kill Lazav, which is pretty cool. I'm going to send an Ornery Goblin, offer the trade with Lazav. Or it'll just kill Barrier of Bones if they block with that. Looks like we're trading with Lazav. In that case, I'm playing Rock Charger here over Bounty Agent. If Lazav was still on the board, I'd play Bounty Agent so I could kill it if anything really scary ended up in their graveyard before they could copy that. There's Hired Poisoner for some Death Touch from our opponent. Here's a Blade Instructor that'll attack alongside Rock Charger quite well. Looks like our opponent is Sultai. Maybe splashing in the Lazav or splashing in some green cards. We'll see in the future. We're just going to take this damage and get aggressive against our opponent. Mentoring up. Now we got a 2-4 flyer. Next turn we'll have a 3-5 flyer if these remain, which will be really impressive. Think... I think I want to play Skyline Scout. If I don't draw into a land, I could spend the uh, two mana to give that flying and make sure I'm hitting them with everything next turn. If I do draw the land, pretty much nothing is going to stop me from playing Aurelia. I suppose if I do draw land, I could play Bounty Agent and use Skyline Scout's flying ability. There is a dead weight for the Blade Instructor, so unfortunately no more Mentor for us. We'll take the 5 here. I think we're still racing. We're down to 14. So we are tied on life totals, but I get another attack in here. Blade Instructor is the draw. To set in for both for 4. This Barrier of Bones is looking real sad here. Here's another Blade Instructor. Demir Informant, another pretty nice grounded blocker. If I draw the land for Aurelia, which I'm really hurting for at this point, I'd like to give Rock Charger Vigilance so I have a good blocker for their Rampaging Monument in this next turn. That is, if they don't kill any of my stuff. If they kill one of my things, then Rock Charger is only going to be a 2 4 instead of a 3 5. I guess I'd also be hitting them for 8 if I draw Aurelia next turn and they don't kill anything. Do I actually... wait a sec, do I actually... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8... I hit them for 8 without Aurelia if I attack with everybody as well. And I use Skyline Scout's ability. I've got a real big attack coming up. So we're down to 10. Oh, we're down to 9 actually. Well, no, no land here. I think I'm just attacking with everybody. Rock Charger, you're going to give Blade Instructor flying. Blade Instructor, you're going to put a counter on Rock Charger. Skyline Scout, we're going to pay your mana. Opponent's down to two. I have two separate flying attackers. If they have a Creeping Chill, they could kill me. Because they have 6 damage on board. Creeping Chill does 3 to each opponent. Other than that, they need something really good defensively. So I'm down to 3. And looks like that's the game. There's the concession from our opponent. So that is the first game going to the Boros Aggro deck. Pretty nice to be able to pull out that win there when we still had basically a full grip. 
just because most of our hand was uncastable at that point, but still. A little bit of a still had all these as backups. Yoshi Rider, I like that name. That's a good username. All right, so we are first. We get to start out with Crater Maker, followed by Rock Shredder, followed by Hammer Dropper. This could be a great hand. Little bit slow, but still some powerful stuff coming up against another Demir deck. Probably gonna end up playing a Boros Guildgate on turn four, so we don't get to curve out into Hammer Dropper, unfortunately. Alright, I suppose I could Fresh Faced Recruit here to make sure that I can Hammer Dropper next turn. Against just a Barrier of Bones, I think that seems fine. I don't really need to throw a Rock Charger out here. Yeah, that seems fine. Just attacking in in case they're scared that I'm going to pump spell to kill their barrier bones. Barrier bones is a pretty insignificant creature overall, so I, they're just always going to take that bluff, but just in case, you never know. Some people really like their barriers. Now that they have a Demir Informant, I really want to give things flying. Still think I'd rather drop Hammer Dropper first, though. Get some Mentor going on. And I did draw the land for next turn, attacking with Hammer Dropper and Barging Sergeant. Getting real big. This is probably a counter spell for my opponent. They're holding four mana up. It could also be Artful Takedown. I think either way, I kind of want to just play Rock Charger here then. They're probably going to Artful Takedown and kill my Hammer Dropper or counter one of my things. It's going to be one of those two. Let's go to combat and see what it is. Artful takedown it is. Tap the crater maker. Kill the hammer dropper. Alright. That is fine. Let's get some fly in here. Opponent has five mana. This is when they would ideally be casting their 3-4 Flyer Surveil 2. Looks like they do not have that. There's a Dark Blade Agent out. Whenever they Surveil, that gets Death Touch, and if it damages me in that turn, they get to draw a card. Really nice uh, value card there. We draw into a Sure Strike. They have two mana up. I'm just going to slam down the Barging Sergeant. Make our Rock Charger bigger here. Guess I could make Fresh Faced Recruit bigger, and then I'm getting in for even more damage, because then Fresh Faced is a 3-2 first strike. They can't kill that without a combat trick. Yeah. Rock Charger's gonna give Sergeant Flying. Sergeant's gonna give Recruit an extra power. They probably just block with Demir Informant, but it's still good to spread out our plus one plus one counters here. Interesting. I guess they want uh, creatures in their graveyard for some kind of undergrowth ability. Because otherwise I was completely tapped out, so there was not a reason to not block the Demir Informant. Or with the Demir Informant there. I suppose, actually no, that was a really smart play from our opponent, because we didn't play a land that turn, so I could have just went land Crater Maker. Kind of want to stop them from drawing a card. I mean, they're at 15. How important is that? Because I am losing a Crater Maker to do it. I'm basically discarding Crater Maker or allowing them to draw one. This is my choice here. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. This next turn, and I have a Sure Strike. I probably just gonna attack with everybody in this next turn. Try to Sure Strike into a quick win. We'll let them draw the card. It's a Muse Drake, so it's another blocker, so it helps hold down the fort. Uh, again, thanks to the first strike. Um, Fresh Faced Recruit is already safe to attack. So we attack with everybody. Mentor up the Crater Maker this time. 
give the sergeant flying. There are not a lot of wrath effects in this format, so I think I am just going to run out the blade instructor. It's pretty much just ritual of soot in Guilds of Ravnica. Destroy all creatures with Kavarna at cost three or less in Demir, and that is a rare, so I don't think it's super likely. I am going to sure strike here to clear out more of their board. I suppose, even without Blade Instructor, our board is really good here, but... If they just tap out for, like, Ritual of Sit Barging Sergeant still puts tons of pressure by itself, I think we're okay to Blade Instructor. Cry of the Carnarium is obviously terrifying, but that is in Ravnica Allegiance, not Guilds of Ravnica, so we don't have to worry about that here. And looks like they are just presenting more blockers, so definitely glad that I threw out another attacker here. Okay. We're definitely going to attack with everybody, that much is sure. What are their best blocks? Crater Maker is going to kill whatever blocks it. Fresh Face Recruit's gonna kill whatever blocks it. They do have some good double blocking opportunities, but we still gotta stay on the aggressive here. They could double block Barging Sergeant, but then we can use Crater Maker's ability. I think we just slam that all attack. Right now, Blade Instructor trades with anything. If I put a counter on Blade Instructor, it'll trade with just Guild Major Dark Blade Agent, but it still trades with most things. Yeah, we want to give Barging Sergeant flying. Yeah, I suppose. We'll put the counter on the Blade Instructor. If Blade Instructor does survive this turn, then uh, that means that Blade Instructor can mentor onto more things in the future. I doubt Blade Instructor survives this turn, though. They're going to go for the Barging Sergeant double block. So they take eight, or I save my Barging Sergeant, trading Goblin Crater Maker for Night Veil Sprite. And then they take five. That seems fine. I think five is enough. Let's keep Barging Sergeant on this board. Pass the turn here. Maybe they'll Thought Erasure my planes or something. Looks like just a concession from our opponent. The Rock Charger Barging Sergeant combo. Too strong. Well, might have been undervaluing those Barging Sergeants. They've been doing a lot of work in these couple games here. I guess just in that game. That was, <laughs> that was the only game I played one. Might want to go back to the drawing board throw another one in. Because that was pretty great. Mainly because of the Rock Charger, though. The Rock Charger really uh, is maybe what worked great there. Should have thrown another Sergeant over the boar, I guess, for now. I actually edited my deck mid-video. That's something I always say, yeah, I could do that if, if something's working or not working out. And then I never do it. I always forget. But this time, this time I actually edited the deck. So two wins and no losses for the Boros deck. It's going pretty great so far. Only need one more win to get that perfectly average run. Two more wins to break even. At four wins, if you already own basically the whole set, which I do, you're getting enough gems out of the booster packs that you're, you're breaking even with how many gems you spent to play the draft.
because you get pretty much 20 gems out of every pack and you're winning three extra packs and 1400 gems so i guess since i only got 20 gems during the draft itself this time uh i actually won't break even even if i hit four wins i'll get 1480 gems when i spent 1500 gems i'll lose 20 gems anyways this seems like a pretty great start we've got aurelia next turn i played rock charger instead of blade instructor because blade instructor does not pair up well into that shield mate but it will pair up well uh, once i get more um, more creatures on this board it'll pair up well alongside the rock charger but so will Aurelia, and Aurelia is a lot scarier and needs to be dealt with immediately or I win, so <laughs> we're going to play Aurelia first. If they don't have the immediate, like, Conclave Tribunal, we're going to have a pretty swell time. And we're only one mana away from an inescapable blaze now as well. We've got the fifth mana in hand. There's a Nullhide Ferox from our opponent. They can't play any non-creature spells unless they pay two mana. Like, two additional mana. I think we're just going to win, then. I don't even want to try to deal with the, the Null Hide Ferox. Because... We can just race it in the in the sky. Because it's it's forcing our opponent to not be able to... Uh, to cast non-creature spells, which means they can't really cast removal. See, so yeah, I think they're literally just dead next turn, even. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. They go to 1 next turn. They're 1 away from dead if they can't cast any removal spells here. Send in the Ferox. No blocks. And I mean, I have Inescapable Blaze as well, so they're incredibly dead, actually, because I can still cast uh, removal spells. Oh no, they paid the extra mana! Oh no, that means they're going to be doing a removal spell. Goodbye, Aurelia. It's fun while it lasted. Oh no, they're just going to make a 2-2. Okay. Well, this is going to be a fast, brutal win here, unless they have a prey upon as well. Nope, just an urban utopia to draw a card. Well, Aurelia kind of just did the thing. Aurelia says, kill me now or you're dead, and they could not kill her, so that's uh, unfortunate. Oh, I guess they are just dead on board. I forgot I had two mentor creatures, not just the one. That was a pretty great game for us. We had Conclave Tribunal and Inescapable Blaze just as backups. It's gotta feel nice. Well, that's why you take Aurelia, if you see Aurelia. Aurelia's just bonkers, not a lot to say there. Just kinda trounced our opponent with a big mythic bomb. They had their own big mythic bomb, but... We got ours out first, and on the aggressive. That game could've easily went like the exact opposite. If our opponent was um, was on the play and they got Null Hide Ferox out, along with some other attacking creatures, before we got Aurelia out, they could have beat us down before we could do anything about it. This is going to have to be a mulligan here. And that's keepable. I don't super love it. I guess it does look pretty good with three lands that I go two, three, four if I draw one land. But uh, it is sad to lose out on the Barging Sergeant. Barging Sergeant can even mentor onto Aurelia, which is insane. Make Aurelia even bigger? She seems unnecessary. We are against an is it deck, so I'd be surprised if they couldn't kill Aurelia pretty quickly. There's a Wee Dragonauts from our opponents. Blade Instructor trades into that pretty well. Can't attack into that with Skyline Scout, though, until I mentor it with Blade Instructor. I could with Righteous Blow, but I don't want to spend two cards to kill their one. I don't want to spend Skyline Scout and Righteous Blow to kill Wee Dragonauts. Piston Fist Cyclops from our opponent. So, I think... I could play Rock Charger, hold up Righteous Blow. 
Or I could just drop Aurelia. I don't really have great attacks here, and I'm not really gonna have great attacks. Even with Aurelia out, until I can give stuff flying, so... I'm gonna play Rock Charger first. Rock Charger might also draw removal from our opponent. Uh, to make the path more clear for Aurelia. With Piston Fist Cyclops and, is and Wii Dragonauts on the board, they're much more likely to have a lot of main phase kind of instants and sorceries than counter spells. So I don't really think I need to play around counters too heavily here. Because both of those cards incentivize you to be casting stuff during your turn. So there's a Whisper Agent just during the main phase to surveil. I actually would have been really scared if they held onto the Whisper Agent until my turn, because then I would have I would have felt like I punted and they're holding up a counter. So I'm glad that they main phased that. Makes me feel all warm and comfy and safe. As opposed to the alternative. I guess they do have two mana up here. They could have Disdainful Stroke. I would hate to see it, but I still think I got a main phase Aurelia for the extra damage she gives. All right, no Disdainful Stroke. I love it. Give something plus two plus oh Vigilance this turn. If I give Rock Charger the plus two plus oh, then I can't mentor it with Blade Instructor, so I guess I got to give it to Blade Instructor. Then attack with those two, Blade Instructor mentoring onto the rock. And then we Dragonauts will trade with Blade Instructor. Yeah, I think a permanent plus one plus one counter is better on the rock than the plus two plus so, so that's why I made the attack that way, but I totally forgot about the we Dragonauts. But at least it's out of the way. That was their only flying creature. Now my entire field flies. They've got six mana now. They could inescapable blaze Aurelia. No attacks. Another rock charger. I actually do like that. Let's get into combat here. Uh, for mentor reasons, we kind of have to just target Aurelia with her own ability, which sucks a little bit, because that means if they have instant speed removal, we do get a little bit hosed. Don't even get the extra two damage out of Aurelia here. So it doesn't play around instant speed removal, but it's still uh, such an upside to be getting the plus one plus one counter here that we have to just play into it if they have it. It is not worth uh, playing around. Uh, I think I'm still wanting to make Rock Charger bigger. First. Dream Eater. Get out of here. Well... <laughs> Our opponent's not supposed to have a bonkers mythic rare. It's supposed to be just us. So they get to put Aurelia back in our hand, and they're going to try to block and kill Rock Charger. We are going to Righteous Blow Dream Eater. This doesn't go as poorly as they want it to go for us. Oh, actually, Rock Charger still got its, uh, got its counters. But they get to block and try to kill Skyline Scout. That's, actually, that's even better for us. That's actually really good for us. I did not think that Rock Charger would get its counter. I'm so glad that it did, because that actually turned that into pretty favorable for us. It did slow down our damage, but that's basically it. The biggest thing it did was definitely Surveil 4. We're at 20 life, so there's no way I'm going to run into a Sure Strike here. Even if they don't have a Sure Strike in hand, it is not worth the risk. There's no way they are going to out-aggro us. Here's eight damage. They're down to seven. Now we just play some creatures. 
Don't really need to hold up a sure strike. Again, I'm at 17. If they, even if they play an instant or sorcery in the main phase, I'll just like not block anything. Hypothesis does four to a creature. Not quite enough to kill Aurelia, which is fantastic. Ridiculous card. Five toughness for four mana. Yep, and there's there's the opponent's concession. They're just like, wait, why is that five toughness? It's not fair at all. I would agree. Aurelia is just destroying souls. We're at four wins. We've broken even. Not quite. 1480 gems, so definitely want to get another win up in here. Want to get another win, get full gems out of this. I am raking up quite well with the set. I do like the Ravnica sets a lot. I just love the guilds. I love Ravnica as a plane, so I tend to, to draft a lot when these sets are around, so I wouldn't be surprised if I get back into Diamond again. I would be surprised if I hit Mythic, because I've never hit Mythic in my life. So I'll probably, probably get up to Diamond by the time Kaldheim releases. That'll be pretty cool. So we had the mulligan away the first hand into this one, which is a little bit of a risky keep, but it's got two, two drops. So we have multiple plays even if we don't draw land. And if we do, now we have two Sky Knight Legionnaires thanks to that draw. So we've got a real kind of scary aggressive start. Crater Maker can kill the Fire Urchin. If I attack, they block, and then I sacrifice it as well. So I can turn that into a trade if I really want to. I think I'd rather just drop down Sky Knight Legionnaire, though. Get in for that unblockable damage. But it is important to remember that's an option later on if they don't play any other attacking creatures. Or blocking creatures. We are taking a Fire Urchin damage. They are on Is It Blue Red. Here's a Leap Frog. Uh, I think we're just playing another Sky Knight Legionnaire and attack with everybody. I'm fine trading Crater Maker for Leapfrog if that's what they want. That is the play. Opponent is down to 14 now. They play a Crackling Drake or a Muse Drake. I will be sad. Just some ground creatures. I like that. Just try to keep getting in there with stuff that they cannot block. Put them down to 10 now. They're on a three turn clock from this point on. Dropping an Ornery Goblin and a Bounty Agent on the ground to slow down their offense. This also means they're a lot more... Um, they should be a lot more hesitant to just slam all attack and really try to race us here. Because that means that my ground troops get to get in as well. Just the Fire Urchins. I could trade with my Ornery Goblin for one of them. Or I can just leave my aggro. I'm only taking two here unless they play some crazy instants and sorceries. Then I'll take probably up to like six. But uh, yeah, it looks like nothing there. So glad I did not do the blocks. Swathcutter Giant's going to be nice against Ornery Goblin and Leapfrog. They could have an instant here, the two mana instant speed draw a card, and then they're trading Leapfrog for a Sky Knight. I don't love that. I guess my ground troops also trade. Let's just send in with everybody, I think. Keep, keep aggro here. Keep the aggression on. Sure strike. That is about the worst instant or sorcery they could have. So there goes one of my Legionnaires and they get to keep their Leapfrog. But I am still getting in for four here. I do still have one Sky Knight Legionnaire, and they're down to six. And I'm one mana away from a Swathcutter Giant, which should be really big on this board. Maximize Altitude is a sorcery, so they cannot use it to give Leapfrog Flying during their turn. So they are going to use it on the aggressive here. They have eight damage. They could have 11 damage if they use it again. So that is probably the, the debate they're having with themselves. So there's the 8 damage. I'm down to 8, so next turn if they cast it again, I die. They're at 6, so... 
if they have another maximized altitude, next turn they discard a card. Well, I mean, they do have another maximized altitude. Next turn, discard a card, maximize altitude on a fire urchin. That one gets flying and plus two. So three, four, five, six. I can block the other fire urchin with swath cutter giant. So they'll need a removal spell and and maximize altitude to kill me. I think I'm going to attack like this so that they're dead to Sky Knight Legionnaire on the attacks. So my out here is them not having something. There's the maximize altitude. They need one more pump spell or two more instants or sorceries here to win. All right, down to two. Is that just game then? We're sending it with everybody for sure. All right, oh, that was scary. Oh, that was scary. Go down to two. Really close match. Really cool one there. Those fire urchins really stack up real quickly. I felt like I had no chance to lose earlier in that game. I felt like the Legionnaires are just going to get in there, chip away till they're dead. We're super safe. And then they, bam, hit me for eight, present eight damage the next turn as well. Real scary stuff, but we've made it to five wins and no losses. 1,600 gems and four packs are the rewards at this point. We're straight up in the cash money. We're getting gems for free at this point. Two more wins and I could get my first seven win run. Well, not really. I did live stream some Guilds of Ravnica. Link in the description to my Twitch channel if you're interested in that. I don't have a consistent schedule for that though. It's just whenever I have extra time and I feel like doing bonus drafts. So I did live stream some Guilds of Ravnica. I did get a seven win run with a nice Demir deck as well so this would be my first my first seven win run in a video i'm gonna actually start out with fresh face recruit here i like dropping out a first striker against another aggressive deck which when they go two mana goblin locksmith even if there is it they're going to be an is it aggro deck rather than an is it control deck so they are boros as well so in the boros mirror i do love me some first strike Goblin Crater Maker to be able to shoot Smell Warden. Smell Ward. Sp I can't speak. Smelt Ward Minotaur before, uh, before blocks, but I think I'd rather just play a Rock Charger here or a Blade Instructor. Can also Demotion and Goblin Crater Maker. I have too many options to really know what's right here. I am too dumb. If I just attacked in a lot faster, I might have been able to make them think I had Righteous Blow or something. But at this point, I think they, they're probably convinced I don't. I'm going to just drop Blade Instructor, actually. Set into or set up for a Mentor attack next turn, making my Fresh Faced Recruit a 3-2 for a Striker, which will be really nice. Candlelight Vigil on the Smelt Ward Minotaur. We're definitely going to demote that, but it is going to still hit me for five a turn. So I think I demotion that and Crater Maker the Locksmith before blocks. That way Blade Instructor can keep getting in. And we're unfortunately having to race our opponent, which I don't love because I'm already down to 13. And I'm drawing nothing but lands right now, so... Don't love my prospects currently. Down to eight. We're dead in two more swings from Smelt Ward Minotaur. And there's some Sworn Companions to shut off the Blade Instructor from attacking, basically. Oh no. Righteous Blow is a good draw. So I can trade my Blade Instructor plus a Righteous Blow for Smelt Ward Minotaur, and then I kind of just try to stabilize with Rock Charger.
Still not a huge fan of this, but it doesn't look like I just immediately die anymore. Which is something. If they have like a sure strike here, I do still just immediately die, even if I block with everything. That's not going to work out for me. Alright. It does kind of suck having to use the two removal spells on that thing. Oh no, and a true fire captain comes out. But Aurelia though... True Fire Captain puts me under so much pressure, though, because when that takes damage, it deals that much damage to me. I feel like I probably still just die. What is our best play here? Pump up the Fresh Face Recruit, get as much damage as possible in here. They're at 14. Pumping up the Fresh Face Recruit would be 5... 6 damage this turn, puts them down to 8. They would be dead in the sky next turn if I can survive. Which creature would I rather have up as a blocker, the 3-2 or the 1-3 flyer? I guess the 1-3 flyer? And they do the same amount of damage, no matter which one gets Vigilance. So yeah, put them down to 8. Next turn I can attack for 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So if they only gain 1 life here, then I have a lethal crack back. If they just slam all attack, that's an issue. Yeah, they're probably going to survive next turn. <laughs> because uh, they can mentor with True Fire Captain, mentor onto the one of the life linkers. So I need to draw into like Inescapable Blaze or something. I have to, I have to top deck something pretty great here. Or they're just going to win off of two swings. I suppose if they don't have anything in their hand here, I might have to think about blocking True Fire, but I don't think that I can do that and survive. If I block True Fire, I take three there. I take eight. I literally take eight. I cannot block and kill True Fire, Captain. Shoot. That is why I should have given Fresh Face Recruit, Recruit Vigilance, because then I could block True Fire with Fresh Face Recruit, and Aurelia could block something else. So, this is another situation where if they have Sure Strike, I'm just super dead. If I block like this, I go to two, and then Rock Charger can block True Fire Captain next turn. So now I can kill them in two attacks. Okay, so if I... Hmm, give Rock Charger... If I give Aurelia Vigilance, that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They're not dead. I think I give Rock Charger... I guess I just don't attack with Rock Charger. I actually give Aurelia Vigilance, attack with Fresh Face Recruit and Aurelia. I need them to have nothing basically. Because if they have a single removal spell, I'm already going to die if they get rid of Rock Charger, because then the only way I can block True Fire Captain is with a two or more power creature, which just kills me to True Fire Captain's ability. So I'm already dead to a single removal spell, so there's no reason to play more defensively and like not attack with Recruit. All right. What do you got, opponent? Final turn. I guess if they have literally just Collar the Culprit, destroy a creature with power, or with toughness four or greater, that would be like the one thing. Uh, so I go to one. Just a land? Did we get there? With first strike, I'm good to attack with this because they won't gain life off it still. Oh my god, we got there. I probably still shouldn't have attacked with Fresh Faced Recruit because they could have had like Sure Strike, but if they had Sure Strike, they could have Sure Striked my creature to have it First Strike do lethal damage to True Fire Captain uh, and kill me that way. Yeah, if they had if they had any pump spell, they would have just used it on my creature already to kill me with True Fire Captain. So yeah, that was a safe attack. Oh, God. 
There's Rock Slide Sorcerer. So we're at six wins and zero losses. 1,800 gems and five packs as our rewards right now. Aurelia is just running away with games. Absolute ridiculous bonkers mythic rare. And we faced against two other bonkers mythic rares. We faced against a Nullhide Ferox. We faced against a, a Dream Eater. Some scary stuff, but uh, Aurelia stands supreme. Aurelia with sour cream and tomatoes. All right, Pilfering Imp is probably going to troll us a little bit. Eat our Barging Sergeant. Feels good. Trade my 1-1 Flyer for your 4-2 Haste Minotaur. Mentor as well. And now they know everything in our hand as well. So they know to play around the Sure Strike. They might take Crater Maker if they have a two or less toughness creature that they want to, to keep around. Okay, they do take the Barging Sergeant. That is what I expected. Um, I think I'll start off with the Skyline Scouts. In case they play like a Barrier Bones type thing, we've been seeing thousands of those. Alright, I'll absolutely present trade with Veiled Shade. And I'll take the trade if they do. Because that can like plus a bunch later. Rather save this Sure Strike for later, even though they know about it. Because I want to play a creature this turn. I should definitely use Sure Strike to trade with a uh, creature sooner rather than later, though, because it's much weaker when they know about it. Sky Knight Legionnaire is a good draw. However, I can't Sky Knight Legionnaire and hold up Sure Strike. So I'm either getting in two damage with Sky Knight Legionnaire or I'm getting in two damage with Goblin Crater Maker. I should have played a mountain here, but I wanted to play the land that they already knew that I had. Yeah, in that case, I'm just playing a Sky Knight Legionnaire because I just played a plains instead of a mountain there. Probably should have just played a mountain. Like, screw, screw hidden information. doesn't really matter. Because if I played a mountain, I could attack Sure Strike and then still play Ornery Goblin main phase two. Prey upon, get out of here, that's irritating. Trade my Crater Maker for the Painter now, but ah, it's, still, it's just a 2 3. Just butthole. Yeah, I think not playing the mountain last turn was a huge, huge punt on my part. This would have went much better if uh, if I played Ornery Goblin last turn and Sky Knight Legionnaire this turn. They've got a Crawl Swarm, one card in hand, so it could be a creature card to uh, to discard to bring that back. Just send in. They are going to trade with the Crater Maker. Let's play a Bounty Agent. Pass the turn. I guess I do have one 6 mana spell in my deck, so I should have played my land in case they had a Burglar Rat to make me discard a card. They have a Whisper Agent here to trade with something. Hey, that actually makes me feel pretty good here. That means they're getting uh, they're getting flooded as well. Just surveil that uh, that wand of bone, wand of vertebrae, to the grave. All right, looks like we're we're getting less flooded than our opponent, which means we're in a good position here. If they draw any creature card, though, they do get to play Crawl Swarm instead. They have enough mana to do that now, I think. Or I guess not quite. They would need eight mana. No, they need 
Yeah, they would need eight mana, so they have enough to do that if they wanted to do that instead. But I guess they're playing Glow Spore Shaman, because that can trade for either of these anyway, and all they're going to want to do is trade. We're going to stay aggressive, mentor onto our Ornery Goblin, accept the trade with the Glow Spore Shaman. They do get a lot of self mill out of that card, which will help for any undergrowth top decks that they have. Like Vigor Spore Worm would be insane. Golgari Fine Broker. That might just be game, because now they get to pick up that Vigor Spore Worm and attack with, uh, with Fine Broker for a million next turn and have a 6-5. Six, 6-4. Five, six, well, I guess I'll offer the trade with Ornery Goblin. I don't love it, but I don't think that they'll block here because they have Vigor Spore Worm coming up. Okay, so now they're dead to an inescapable blaze, and they don't have reach, so I get to hit them for four in the sky, so they're also dead to sure strike. I have outs now. Which I feel like I I wouldn't really have outs if they just took the, uh, the fine broker trade there. So we're down to nine. Barging sergeants? That's huge. That gets flying with Rock Charger. Oh my god. Oh, that's so rude. That's evil. Magic's not a fair game. That's Exactsies. That's another out I didn't even think of. Oh my god. I feel dirty. Our opponent had like the Golgari dream at the end of like the ultimate stabilized Glow Spore Shaman. Mill yourself six. Drop your fine broker. Pick up the big, scary worm, but it didn't matter. That's seven wins and no losses for Aurelia. Deck. Boros, good stuff. Definitely one of the best guilds in the set. Does some ridiculous things, as we've seen here. I don't even think this was a particularly fantastic Boros deck. It is pretty good. Obviously, it's got some haymakers like Aurelia. But the uh, the curve and the the cheaper mentor creatures could could definitely be here for it to be an even greater deck. But as it stands, it was more than good enough. That's seven wins and no losses. Pretty fantastic Guilds of Ravnica draft here. Let's open up these six packs. It's likely to just be gems, so not the most interesting pack opening at the end of the video here. But as always, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. If you want to see more Magic Arena videos, primarily drafts, stick around on the channel. Like, comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. There will be some, some things you can click on in the video here if you're interested in watching some more stuff. And, as always, thank you all for watching, and I'll see you again tomorrow. I don't normally have six packs to open at the end, so that didn't time out very well. Uh, I still have two packs to go. Oh, I actually got a rare! Mnemonic Betrayal, the jump scare card. That actually scared, <laughs> that scared the heck out of me uh, in the live stream last night. I got jump scared in my card game. Like, come on. You, you can't do that. Anyways, all right. Thank you for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.